How many times have you heard someone say, I wish I could undo the past. I wish I hadn't made that choice. If I could only go back and do it again. Usually we're over 50 and looking back on things and seeing how maybe we could have changed things um, as we're facing retirement with maybe not enough money because we spent it unwisely or, or if we made relationship choices that didn't work so well. And we go, well, that's life. It is what it is. We know it's impossible to undo the past and start over. But in our scripture we read today, as part of the law that was given to the Israelites, they were allowed to start over every 50 years. And it was called the year of Jubilee. It re not only was allowed, but it was required that they start over in that 50th year. We read in our, our reading this morning about all the things that would happen during that year of Jubilee. Well, not all the things because the chapter goes on and I didn't want to read all of it because you get tired doing that. But go ahead and read the rest of Leviticus 25 when you get home. It's very interesting. And it says, the year of Jubilee will be announced by a trumpet blowing. And it would be to the sound of the tenth day of the seventh month and the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. That's in verse 9 that you read. There was a trumpet that would blow with, that would announce the year of Jubilee. And it's after the Day of Atonement. I love the Old Testament because in the laws and the rules and the way they lived and the way circumstances happened to them, it reveals Christ in the New Testament. Our freedom from sin, our freedom from enslavement by Satan, which started with Adam and Eve, comes because of the atonement of Christ. And the day of atonement that the Jews had back in Leviticus, they would do sacrifices. And I don't want to get ahead of Pastor Dave with the ark, but when they sacrificed the animals, the blood was put on the mercy seat of the ark. It covered the commandments, the, the tablets of stone that were in the ark, so that when God looked down on the law, he saw the blood that covered the law. So the Israelites could not start over anew until that sacrifice was made, that atonement sacrifice for all of their sins that they had done. And then he let them, or gave them, significant blessings in this year of Jubilee. Now the significance of the trumpet, it was joyful and it was announcing the year of Jubilee. It was a proclamation. This is the 50th year. This is when all the deaths are canceled. This is when the enslaved are freed, when those who are in prison are let out, when those who have had to sell their property because they were broke, get it back. When you lost your inheritance, it was returned to you. And that joyful trumpet made that proclamation that these blessings were about to start. That proclamation was the same proclamation that was announcing Jesus coming to earth, born of the spirit and born of flesh. He was all man, he was all God. He came to proclaim truth and righteousness and freedom from sin. So that trumpet in the Old Testament carries forth to the New Testament. It was typical of Jesus preaching the gospel, saying, I am God. I am here to deliver you. You need to follow me. Psalms 89.15 said, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. That trumpet was a joyful sound, not a mournful sound like the bugle that plays at a funeral, but a joyful announcement. Um, let's see. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Jesus came and his blood was shed for our redemption 
for our regeneration by his spirit and his resurrection assured us that we would have eternal life. I already talked about the day of atonement in the year of the Jubilee. Israel was taught by the sacrifice that was made, by the blood that was put on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, that no blessing, no mercy, no grace can be given to us as sinners unless blood is shed. In the days before Christ, it had to be of a, of a lamb without blemish. After Christ made his sacrifice, no more blood had to be shed. It was shed once for all on the cross. And his blood was accepted in the holy place in the temple, in the holy of holies, where only the priest could go, high priest could go. that sacrifice once for all that gave us the blessing that the Israelites received once every 50 years. That blood has to be shed before we can become rightly related with God, before his grace is extended to sinners. Salvation is altogether by God's free grace. We have said that over and over and over, and I firmly believe it that it only comes through the redemption in Jesus Christ, not anything that we can do to deserve it. Because before the foundations of the earth, it was done. It was done. And then it entered into a timeline where we know it occurred in history. But that plan was already formulated and in place before mankind was ever, ever created it was finished in the mind and purpose of God. And Jesus was not taken by surprise. He was there, part of the whole plan, and he knew what was going to happen. It was executed in time so we can look back on it in history so that those looking forward to it could follow the prophecies and know that Jesus was crucified and that because of that, we receive salvation. Students have said that Christ was killed on the cross in the year of Jubilee. They have done the math and looked through the calendars and said that is... It was during that year. That is the year where redemption came. That is the year where grace came to us. That is where freedom from sin came to us. What was to be done in the year of Jubilee? Several things. Eight things, actually. Liberty was to be proclaimed throughout the land. The exiles, those who were in prison, were to be returned. The captives were emancipated. They were let loose. In the New Testament, we read, if the Son shall make you free, you will be free indeed. We also, captives to sin, are freed because of what Christ did. The debtor was set free. His debts were wiped out. No more did he owe those debts. Each family opened their arms and received those who had been afar off. Everyone returned home in that year of Jubilee. Remember the prodigal son? That would be his time to return home and say, I want to be part of the family again. I have sinned against you, Father. I'm back. Please, just make me your servant. And what did the father say to him? No. Put the ring on your finger, the robe on you. Kill the fatted calf. You are part of the family. And that's how it was when people returned home during the year of Jubilee. Every man received his inheritance again, even if he had squandered it, even if he had wasted it away, he received it back to him. He could not any longer be deprived of possessing his inheritance. And we, 
given the inheritance through Christ Jesus, can never be deprived of that either. Christ gave us salvation, and we as believers have accepted it, and we are held in the Father's hands. All those, Jesus said, all those that you have given me, I have not lost. And once we have become redeemed through the blood of Jesus, we are his forever. The sound of the trumpet was welcome. It was soul-stirring. It was a celebration. It was a signal for everybody to return to what was before. During the year of the Jubilee, they could not work. They had to live and eat what was in the fields that just came up. They couldn't harvest it and save it or sell it. They had to live on what was provided for them. If they had bought property, it was me- the price was measured by the crop it would produce from the time of the sale to the year of Jubilee. And if it was a long time and there would be, say, 25 crops, they would pay 25 crops worth for the property. If it was only five more years till the year of Jubilee, they would only pay for five crops. The property did not change hands, but they could sell the crops on it. The year of the Jubilee Jubilee reminded both the buyer and seller that the land belonged to God and was not to be sold. They were temporary tenants. They were made to realize that this was not their eternal home They were to hold lightly to what was given them, but to realize it all belonged to God. And they could sell the crops, but they couldn't sell the land. Interestingly enough, as you go on through Leviticus, it says that those who had been sold into slavery because they had sold themselves, because they had no money, no way to provide for themselves, were to be purchased back by a relative. A friend could not buy them back, only a relative. Isn't it interesting that Jesus, who was God, came to this earth as man, and he called himself our brother. He, our relative, is the one who purchased us. Not our friend Jesus, but our brother Jesus is the one who purchased us from Satan's control. He said, you do not own my brother Sharon, my brother Diane. Brothers and sisters, he bought us back from Satan who held us captive Adam sinned, we all became sinners. But when Jesus came and shed his blood for us and we accept that sacrifice, we are no longer sinners, but we are rightly related with God and we are one with Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, Be reconciled to God, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be the righteousness of God in him. We, as born-again believers, do not go back into the world. We may make wrong choices. We may sin because we are still human, but we have our advocate with the Father. We have Jesus Christ, our intercessor, who shed his blood for us. We confess our sins. He forgives us for our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 
and says, go on and do what I have called you to do. Walk in faith, believing the sacrifice I have made for you. We no longer serve the master of sin, but we serve Jesus Christ, our new master. And Paul said, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? No, we died to sin. How can we live it any longer? We don't have to wait for that 50 year of jubilee when they celebrated their return of their, their wealth, the return of their inheritance, their forgiveness of sin, their relationships rightened. We don't have to wait for that. We live in that jubilee now, following the cross as believers. You've been set free from sin. You've become a slave to righteousness because Jesus bought you, your brother. May God graciously cause you this very day, today, to hear the jubilee trumpet of his grace, his mercy, that gives us liberty from sin and gives us blessed eternal life forever with God our Father. God bless you.